Yeah, I'm sure you're wondering, what am I doing now, right? I just, like most of you, I just love discovery. I just love opening things up and finding little surprises inside. And so is the case when you open up these old Hirschman power antennas. Hey, they really do. You're going to find some surprises inside. Let's hope I'm going to open up this one. I've already opened up these other three and kind of see like what's down inside here. Oh, look at that. Oh, more fun, more fun. Let me tell you. After opening up, up about 20 of these Hirschman antennas, it's very obvious there's something I can share with you that can prevent some of the little fun things I'm seeing down inside these antennas. So let's take a close look. Hopefully you'll learn something in this video and learn how to take care of and service your own Hirschman power antenna. If you haven't looked inside a older Hirschman power antenna, these are kind of an interesting a piece of engineering. Uh, there's, a, there's quite a bit going on in here. I'm not going to go over the theory of operation and how these are tested or even repaired in this video. That may be a later video, but I want to talk particularly about some of the things you can do to prevent problems. Most of the problems I have found with these are right down in this area. Look at the corrosion, look at the rust, and what happens is this, uh, this wheel bearing, which is rides on the antenna tail that rolls it in to the antenna seizes up. The spring rusts out and breaks. You get a lot of corrosion down here on the the worm drive on the motor. So most of the problems are down here. There are some problems up in these contact points but most of the problems of total failure occur right in this area. And look at this one. I mean how did that get all corroded? Anyway, let's go from kind of bad to worse here. So, and it's, it's every one of them I open up, okay? Here's another one, look at that. Now you can see we're looking at a little more corrosion, okay? The wheel is frozen. The shaft here on the motor drive is badly corroded and rusty. And uh, you can see some of the aluminum is starting to corrode away here. Uh, gee. How does that happen? How does, how does water get into these things anyway? So, okay, that one's bad or needs help. Let's go to the third one. Oh man, look at that. What's growing down in here? Okay, this, this wheel is frozen. You can see the antenna tail right there. It, it enters right down this plastic slide and winds up in the housing below this this uh, gear drive here. But you can see once again, look at all the rust and corrosion. And then let's look at the fourth one. This is one of the worst I've seen here this past week as I've been taking these apart. Look at this. You're thinking, well, what's going on in here anyway? What's all this stuff? This is really corroded. This is very seized up. And look at the Look at the corrosion right in here. So if nothing else, this is another good case for the importance of lubrication, but it's not just lubrication here. There's some other issues going on. The reason the water gets into the antenna, and obviously the engineers knew that water was going to get in the antenna. It doesn't, doesn't get in there from the trunk. It's because a lot of times they put, they put drain tubes on these. They all have drain holes in them, but you'll see some have drain tubes and these go out the lower, you know, below in the side well outside the car. So obviously when Hirschman designed these, they knew the water was going to get into them. And what happens is the water, this takes a long time, but the water comes from the antenna mass going up and down. You know, it goes up and down. Every time it goes up and down, if it's raining, it'll pull just a little bit more moisture in as it collapses. Now this is just a minor amount of moisture, but over 10 years of moisture, look what happens. <laughs> look what happens if this is neglected. So let's talk a little bit more how you can prevent this. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know I really harp on preventative maintenance. It largely due to my aviation background, you know, that's probably where a lot of that comes from. 
But I don't think there's any better illustration on these older Mercedes-Benz about the importance of preventative maintenance than on these Hirschman antennas. I know some people might say, oh, those aren't very good, you know, they fail. Well, they fail after 20 years because nobody does anything to them. That's <laughs> They're really quite reliable. They're going to take a little bit of maintenance, okay? This isn't difficult. It's just, you know, okay, just, if you want to ignore it and not do it, then this is what you're going to have. You're going to have a failed power antenna. You'll have to go out and buy a replacement. Unfortunately, these are no longer available. So if you have an older Mercedes and you want to maintain or retain the original Hirschman power antenna, you're going to have to do some regular service. And I would say every two years, put it on your calendar. Make it, do it the same time you do your brake fluid flush. Okay, it's brake fluid flush time. We're going to do power antenna service. It's not difficult. But before, in between those two-year cycles of service, there's one very important thing you need to do that can prevent a lot of this corrosion that you've seen down inside these antenna housing. And that is to keep your antenna mass lubricated. You're going to say, well, why that? Well, think about it. If you have the correct quality lubricant that you put on this, I say every time you fuel up, okay, you've got some Hirschman antenna lube, and that's the only kind of lube you should use on these antennas. Don't use grease and don't use oil. All that does is attract dirt and then it's going to jam the mast. Now, we carry the Hirschman antenna lube in little packets as a highly specialized lubricant. But wh while you're fueling your car, just grab one of these wipes and lubricate the antenna. The lubrication is a repellent, so it will keep the water from moving down inside the mass when you re retract the antenna. It's not going to prevent all of it, but it's certainly going to retard it, and it's certainly going to minimize the amount of moisture that gets down into the, into the bottom here. So that's number one. Keep that antenna mass lubricated. Not only will that prevent corrosion, but it'll also increase the service life of the mass itself, and it won't overstress the motor in the antenna because it, the mass is working very, very easily. So you know, you're going to pull the side uh, well cover on the driver's side, the trunk. And on a lot of these older ones, you're just going to take and you've got four screws, four Phillips screws to remove. You saw me earlier, you know, pulling this off. And you don't have to take it out of the car. You get in here and you're going to clean all this out. You can use compressed air, a brush, uh, get all the junk out of there. And the first thing you want to do is is spray it up good with a good penetrant, a good rust type uh, penetrant, and just spray all down in this lower area. Clean this as best you can. You do not need to disassemble it. What you're doing is you're pulling out all the corrosion, you're pulling out any moisture that's in here, and then when you're done with that, what you want to do is come in with a synthetic grease. I, I love synthetic grease because it high, has a, a great ability to repel water. And, at least down in this area, you don't need to, you can put a lot of the, the synthetic grease on this roller bearing area here on the shaft of the motor drive and on this spring area. You say, well, why lubricate the spring? Well, it's to prevent rust. It's not, it's not to make the spring work better. So you're just literally coating this area up, up with the synthetic grease so that if any moisture does get in here, it's going to be repelled away from the, these parts that have a tendency to rust. And then close it back up, and uh, you do this again two years later, you'll be amazed at how long <laughs> these antennas last. Now, as, as a parting comment, a couple parting comments in closing this video, I'm thinking about doing a, a video series on rebuilding these. There's, there's some are rebuildable, some are not. And you saw that fourth one I showed you is heavily corroded here. You know, this one, I wouldn't even bother with it. Too much corrosion. So um, leave your feedback. I'd be interested to know how many of, of, of the viewers out there would actually be interested in, in some on-demand videos that go over the process of how to get in here and restore a non-working antenna. We're not talking about just corrosion here. We're talking about one that maybe runs up and stops and doesn't come down. Um, you'll go, we'll go through the test sequence. If the motor's burned out, then you're gonna, you, know, you might want to forget about. But if you have a working motor, and it's not badly corroded. Most of these are repairable. 
with a little know-how. And then also, if, if you get into this, you don't want to deal with these old antennas, we do have the Hirschman Universal right here. This is a great replacement for these older power antennas. Uh, this is available on our website. It's an inexpensive replacement, comes with complete instructions how to put currently in the W116, W123, and W126 chassis. I'm working on modifications to this so you can get it in the 124 and the W201. And then finally, for you 300 TD wagon owners, I think I've got a way that I can get this to work in a station wagon. I mean, that's great because you cannot get these station wagon antennas anymore. So, you know, watch the link below in this video. If I'm able to figure this out, I'm going to have to make some special attachments, I think, to get this to work in a station wagon. But this will be a great, a great help to you 300 TD owners if I can make this work. So just, keep, just look at the uh, description. If I'm, able, if I'm successful later on, you'll see a link to the wagon antenna as well. So, you know, I'm just going to encourage you. I'm going to admonish you. You know, take care of your Hirschman antenna, and it will last a long time. There is one thing I forgot to mention for you who have a working antenna, but you've got a mass problem. The mass is not going all the way up or all the way down. And it may only mean you'll have to just replace the mast, okay? So I'm going to kind of explain how this works. The, uh, you can see the tail. All these antenna masts have a tail, a plastic tail, and there's two types. There's the smooth type and there's one with teeth. We have replacement masts on our website, but you'll have to order them by the style. You, it, you cannot go by year and model because people change these around. So if you're going to order a new mast from us, you've got to pull it out enough so you can see whether it is a smooth type or a tooth type. Okay, that's very important. But if the mast is working properly, you should be able to push on the tail, and it should go all the way out with any, without any stress, and you should be able to pull it in. Okay. Now see here, it's jamming up a little bit. See that? So right in this area, it's frozen. Now, I might be able to save this. I might be able to get uh, some strong uh, penetrant in there, let it soak overnight. One trick I've used is to soak these in hot water with electric dishwashing soap overnight, and sometimes it'll loosen that up. But this is a common problem because these do not get lubricated, and they tend to get seized up like that, and they won't go up and down. So it may not be your antenna. It may just be the mast. Let's pull this mast out. Most, if, the, if, if it's not frozen, you can start the motor and run it out, but this one, since it's on the bench, I'm going to see if I can just pull it out, okay? What I'll do is I'll, yeah, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to, no, the nut's frozen. I can't, I can't get this one out, but, um, so if you, uh, let me grab a wrench and I'll come back. We'll see if we can get that out and we'll pull this antenna out and, and uh, see what the mass looks like on this one. A 12, a number 12 wrench will, will loosen up this mass nut. Once you get it backed out of the ways, you can spin it out the rest by hand. And uh, like I said earlier, if your motor's running, you can actually get in and turn the radio on and this will start running and it'll actually pull out. But I'm gonna see if I can I can pull this mast uh, tail out of here. Um, if you look what it does, you can see where that tail comes down the tube and it goes right, this wheel is what drives it. But it goes down this little plastic slot and right down below here is a chamber and this plastic tail just winds itself up uh, right down inside this housing, right in here. That's where it winds it up and then this winds it back out. So this, is, this bearing pressure here on this wheel is real important to drive that tail in and out and move the mast up and down. So watch as I pull on this. I think, see that? See the, the bearing wheel move? Okay, here it comes. Okay, once you get it out, you want to look at the end. You see how the end is, is tapered to a point? That's a good sign. If you pull this out and it's squared off, 
it probably means that there's a piece of the tail that's broken right down inside here. So you're going to have to take all this apart. There's a bunch of screws in here. You have to pull the whole thing out to get that old piece of plastic tail out. If you don't, you won't be able to install a new antenna mast. So I bet if I look at this one, well, it, it is moving, but look at that. It's jamming right there. Once again, one of the sections is jammed up, totally seized because of lack of lubrication. Here we go again, lack, lack of lubrication. So we have antenna masks on our website like this, brand new ones. They come with complete instructions on how to install these with the antenna in the car. You do not need to remove this, provided your motor is running in and out properly. So if you need help, if you need help with your antenna, uh, you know where to go.